Hello and welcome back to the show. This is Do All The Things on today's episode. It's time. It's finally the big day I get to put together my new 6950X T-Rig. But that means first I have to tear this all apart. That's gonna be a doozy. I'm gonna be doing this for a while. Stay tuned. If you've been following the comedy, you're well aware that uh, I'm looking to upgrade this system and I bought a 6950 XT on an MSI X670E Carbon. Ah, uh, there's, there's various reasons why I chose this board. There was nothing Asus I liked, but then I kind of got cheesed there because uh, I, I recently discovered this thing. The Asus Pro Art B650, B650. I was looking at X670 boards. I guess I'm an elitist like that, but this thing had everything that I needed. It, it was relatively the price point that I wanted. Plus it has dual 8X PCI Express slots. Not, oh, this one's gonna be eight and this one's gonna be four if you use the other one, like a fricking Strix E for like twice the price. And it doesn't have Wi-Fi. I don't give a crap about Wi-Fi. I guess that means it wouldn't have Bluetooth. I do need Bluetooth. I'd have to get an additional dongle. But it has two, two LAN ports and an SPDIF out. That's initially what I wanted. Now I can live without two LAN ports. Can't live without an SPDIF out though. Uh, it seems to be lacking in USB though, but I don't have a lot of USB on this. It's mostly just mouse, keyboard, gaming controller, or editing macro controller, and yeah, my little reader for my Atomos. But enough of that, that's not what we're here for. This thing, torn down. Where TF do we start? I guess I have to drain this loop. That's the only logical thing. I feel like this is probably one of the first time in years that I'm gonna be completely reconfiguring this loop. Unfortunately, before it's gonna drain, I need to get at the top of the res, which is hiding under this friggin' thing. You know, I could try to open this fill port, but it's not gonna happen. It just, oh wait, it happened. Oh, I must have done something where I like put it on loose last time. I got it undone. That should let air into the system, right? The drain should work now. Oh yeah, there we go. As the story goes, I'm running Intel Arc in this system. I built another gaming rig. That gaming rig is upstairs. That's running my 6950HD XT. Down here, I'm running Intel Arc. So my video cards are all naturally aspirated now, which is another reason why I have to rethink my water loop because I don't have a water-cooled card anymore and I won't for a while. Until I can both get a water block for this Intel Arc and get enough water cooling into my upstairs system to be able to cool a video card, I'm I'm not gonna be putting water coolers back on them. Why? So I can swap them around. Run this for editing, but if I want a game up down here, if I want a game on this system, I gotta put my 6950 XT back into it. So I gotta start dismantling and capping this all off. All this, I, I went and did this quick disconnect situation. I don't even need it anymore. How fun is that? I have all sorts of rad in here. I have this big 120 at the, the front here. I got this smaller 120 at the back. And I got this Chunk Master, one of the highest performance rads you can get, as I understand. Or at least it was at the time that I bought it. A Hardware Labs uh, GT, G, G, XP, SR2. Hardware Labs SR2, 360, white. I didn't choose white. I got it used on eBay. That's the color it was. <laughs> oh, trippy, trippy, hooray. And then I keep all sorts of spare plugs around. You don't want that dripping, so I just put a plug in there. Get the fittings off, let that spill out. This pipe is full. We just need to let this burpee burpee. Now I will just start spinning off this fitting. Can I do, uh, oh yeah, this is the EK fitting that you need to stick the thing in the thing before it'll do the thing. Oh, it's got a good bite on there, bud. You don't want to come loose. And I'm wiggling freaking water everywhere. At least I can cap that off. Wow, bud, she's right proper fire formed onto this thing. Ah, oh, geez, the whole freaking temp sensor's coming off. That's fine. We'll take the freaking temp sensor off. Might spill a little bit there. Cap her off. That's what we're doing. We're just working our way down. Can I get these stupid things broke now? Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna need the temp sensor. I'm gonna need a temp sensor. I'm gonna want a temp sensor. I have two options now. I bought a new one from Daz Mode. Got our little drop tubes, spill it out. Come on now. Now this one's most likely sticking around if the tube's long enough, because this is hooked directly up to the rad we're gonna keep. You know, we could start pulling this power supply. 
I'm changing out the power supply. I'm putting my EVGA 1600 back into here. I was having some gremlins in this system, some random restarts. The system would just restart on me like someone pressed the reset button. And in the process of troubleshooting it, I switched out the power supply, put the Seasonic 1200 in there. The problem didn't go away. What causes it? Still don't know, still don't know. But it's not the power supply. So I gotta put my 18, 16 back in here because uh, according to online information, the 750 I have upstairs isn't recommended if I'm running a frickin' 6950 XT. So might be upgrading the power supply in that. Oh, I like how modular just comes out in one chunk. Can't go wrong, bud. We have a safe place to spill water here now if we want. Well, I guess I could just start hucking these cords out. Right, all the electrical's proper hucked down now. There's not a single PSU cable in here. These tubes look dry, mostly. Let's double check this. Release the tension on this pump. Yeah, yeah, nothing's coming out. So I'm gonna pull this. I'm gonna plug it. I have the foamy bits, the pump foam. Because I don't hard mount my pumps, I float them on beds of foam. That way the, um, the vibrations don't reverberate into the case. Oh, look at this pump. <laughs> I don't think that was a very good, very good elephant, bud. Da da da. We'll just snoot this line off there. Oh, look at that. A little bit of suspiciousness. Plug it up. This rod's independent now. That means I can pull her out. Oh, 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 oh. That's one nice little copacetic unit there. This is a fan set that I married together, which means I, I cut the wires and I went in and I like directly soldered the wires from one fan to another fan. So they're just always stuck together and work together. I have an extension cord here that goes to the side fan. That is an old school extension. Yeah, I can start ripping all this off, but I'm not going to because it'll get in the way if I do. I want to continue dismantling this water. Except we're getting tricky because now it's right about here. This tube did not empty for us. If I pull this and bring it down lower, it might get that off. I wish I had more plugs. Specialty tool. Pull her down. Get more plugs. This tube's got water in it too. Or no, no, it's dry except for right there. I should be able to release it. Let's see, a little bit. What's this come off of? This is the return for the reservoir. Okay, well this more has to get plugged than the other one, so jam that up in there for now. Let's see if we can drain some of this. Oh, no, she ain't yet. Pull this fitting, cap that. That's the trick, buds. Get a whole bunch of cheap plastic caps so that when you have to maintain your system, you can just like plug all your water blocks, all your fixtures, so that you can manipulate the system and you won't spill water out of them. And now I guess we can drop this rad. Oh, coming down. Oh. Oh yeah, look at this. A little bit of dusty get in spots that's hard to clean. These were not married, it was just CPU, CPU opt. And then here's some homemade RGB. So those are drop-in resistors to go from the 12 volts to the special level that five mil LEDs require. These fans initially came with white five mil LEDs. I removed them from the back one where the color doesn't matter, but I replaced the ones in the front with RGB five mil LEDs. So that's some custom RGB right there. Oh, that's another little handy kit. Starting to look bare in here. I haven't seen this board. This board's been buried back in here for so long. I don't, I barely even remembered what it looked like. Well, let's uh, let's brave the waters. That is removing this block. Probably gonna spill a little. No, not really, it's good. I'm still gonna plug it there. And then I gotta get the water out the bottom here. Get this uh, SATA out of the way. Oh, what are the chances this USB, oh, look at that. The USB 3 came out without frickin' dem <laughs> uh, You know how USB 3 is. We've ripped connectors off boards before. Ah, this guy here though. It's better to take it from here because it's not so much over the board. You know, I'm, I'm hoping I just kind of snip this off here. Ho, 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 Oh yeah, okay, it's, holy frick, look at this guy. This tube's full of water and it's just kind of floating, hovering. That's trippy. I don't know what to say about that. Now, if we unairlock this water block, this should start draining out. Should, heat turb should. There it goes. This thing's freaking me out, bud. Okay, let's just put it here. If it drips down, it'll drip down. We have this adapter here. We can uh, we can just plug up this adapter and then snoot it back onto there. There we go. We'll be good now. We need to get this thing out. All right, here we go. Got the tube out, get the plugs in, and we're safe. We can now manipulate on this without worrying about spilling water. Okay, so we have some remaining tubes here. This is reservoir return. This is reservoir send. 
and then rad well they're bi-directional it doesn't really matter this was coming off the video card so i guess that was in and that was rad out but you know from rad we go directly to the reservoir so this wiring method isn't exactly practical You'd be going like, you'd be going like this. Wow, I'm really not set up for this. I'm gonna have to rethink how this works. Either way you look at it, I still have to tear this whole rig apart. So we might as well continue our quest. Where the frick is this wire going? I have some wires hidden. Like I spliced them into the general heatsink area. There must be a fan. Oh yeah, there's a fan port here. It's like I ran out of fan headers and I had to get super creative. Can I even get this out of there? Oh yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. All right, this one's RGB. This is an RGB extension that feeds the RGB down to the custom water block daily. Pretty much just rip all this out. This board's pretty much free now. Is there a center screw here hiding somewhere underneath the heat sinks? Do I have to take this assembly apart to get at it? I don't remember. Yeah, there is. There's one hiding right there. This uh, fan shroud has to come off. Yeah, it's just gonna, it's gonna fall down, yeah. Almost don't need it. Ah, it's underneath the heat sink even. Frickin' SSD heat sinks. Are these captured screws at least? Yeah, yeah, they are. Wiggle this loose. Wiggle, 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 wiggle this loose. Oh, the heat sink comes off. Whole SSD assembly. Okay, that's fine. We'll just go set this aside safely. All right now we can get this screw. On finally. Oh, release. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, this is a chonker. That heat sink is a beast. So yeah, we haven't had this guy out of the system in a while. That's a, that's a taste sensation right there. Looks good. All right, can we squiggle out here? Can we squiggle, squeak it out? You don't wanna rip that processor out. Sometimes just a case of squiggling it, squiggle squeaking it, squawk it daily. She's freaking on there, bud. Oh, I think I just broke it loose. Oh, ho, 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 ho. This thing's freaking not doing well. My custom RGB. One thing I will be flipping is this 3950X. Outside of my editing rig, I have no use for a 3950X. I'd rather flip it and put it towards a 5800X3D, or I'm looking at the 5700G, seems very curious to me because I, I wanna see what a eight core APU is gonna be like. Not for the APU, I just wanna see how that processor holds up. Oh, we're gonna need our RGB extension. All right, bud, served me pretty well. Oh, this is sloppy, look at all this. Oh yeah, it's gonna start getting all over the place now, eh? Friggin' guy. So this is all cleaned up now, pretty much. But we have an important question that we need to answer before we can continue. And that is, what kind of frickin' damage have we done here, buds? Running this homemade coolant for all these years. Is this block healthy? We need to do it in inspection. How much filth are we gonna find in here? All right, how are we looking in here? Oh, this is loose now. Oh yeah, these come out like that, eh? Ah, hey, not bad. It's like a little schmooey. Those micro fins are real micro. I guess we have to mine these little rubber bits, but this should clean up nice. Not anywhere near as bad as I might expect. This is a heat killer four. And I don't think I've taken, I'm not sure if I've taken it apart in all the years that I've had it. Like those micro fins are real micro, like real micro. It's almost like how, how's water even supposed to fit in there? You know, there's little signs of calcification here. That's where minimal minerals in the water build up. Probably because I'm using crappy President's Choice distilled water. You drink the stuff, it tastes like they didn't clean their machines, right? But hey, considering how long it's been running and that's all it's got, hmm, I think we're okay. These things obviously need to be peeled off here and put into the holes. But yeah, that clogging might explain some of the suspicious thermals I've seen in the last little while. You know, it hasn't been bad. Like we know some of these CPUs just run hot in general. I should do something about this RGB though, this sloppy RGB. Oh, 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 this is gonna work. This is gonna work. This double-sided 3M goodness should make quick work. Should, key term should. What is wrong with this stuff? It won't peel worth a damn. All right, let's get it slapped on there, bud. Should have done this in the first place. This is a good idea. Ah, oh, except it's got freaking stupid white spots there. Whatever, not gonna see that in the dark. This top piece is still sticking relatively well, or not. Whatever, we'll redo it. All right, this stuff's re-secured, even though it's analog RGB and not modern digital RGB. We shall now invest in permanizing this circumstance, sir. They say that this whole pattern and subsequent Z height is supposed to be compatible with AM4 cooler, which means they should be able to slot a little ring on there. Oh, that thread's compatible. Snugging these up. 
is a daunting task. Finger tight, they might uh, come loose on you. Plier tight, you might slip and damage the board. Carefully now. One thing's for sure, we've blown out some of the knurling on this. So what do I want to use for thermal solution on this? I think I got my grizzy working. Do I want to paste some grizzy on there? Or do I want to put some PTM 7950 thermal pad on there? Hmm. What surface are we batting here, bud? That much. That's 28 mil. What do we have left here? How big is this piece? It's 20 by 25. So I have it on good authority because I've peeled apart these things after they have been installed a while. This is gonna squish down and it's gonna spread out. So we don't necessarily need to cover the full size here. If we cover a majority of the size with like a pad like that, we should be good. Now I wanna take into consideration the layout. Like if we just hammer on the internet real quick here and look at these pictures, this clear spot is the top. So our little puppers are like kinda, they're kinda right, right in around there. So if we offset this a little bit like that, that should hit the sweet spot, should. I, however, knowing that this thing's gonna be stuck on here for a while, have gone something resembling all out. I've cut a pretty much fresh 30 by 30 square. Now, can I get it placed nice? Frickin' guy is sticky. As soon as she touches down, she wants to go all over. Oh boy. Okay, I guess that's gonna have to do right there. Get her stuck there, bud, get her stuck there. Peel her back. Give it another wipe down. Slot this on here. Hopefully we could figure out a way to wire up this RGB. Maybe I need to bring it up the top here instead. Oh, she's already stuck on there. Okay, well, you're a dick then. Yeah, uh, it's not moving now. <laughs> this stuff is so sticky. It's just like, boom, there you have it. Nice, thanks Obama. Oh, another one. Are those puppers magnetic? And the block is on. Done deal, not going anywhere. I believe with some doing, I'd be able to get the RGB line to go under here. Ugh, why did I think I could get it to go here? It's not going there at all. Damn, I really wish I kind of got it up here. It's just gonna have to tuck around here and not be anywhere near as elegant a solution as we would have liked. Oh, these caps feel a little loose, like I don't want to put wire tension on them. Something like that, not my best work. It's even potentially, hmm, I don't like it. Maybe I could put it here and hide it under the board if it clears this heat sink. Let's, uh, let's get the SSD mounted. SN850, so what we have here is we have this pad, which isn't used because I believe that's for a double-sided SSD. Same with this one. So if we put it in this one, we don't remove that. There's a little mounting block there. Oh, it's not, it's not, oh boy, we have to force, oh no, it's just that pad's real tight, eh? But we don't have support in the middle here. I don't like it when we don't have support in the middle. Can we take this little self adhesive block here? Ugh, it's just ruining this thing here. I wanna put it more center. Our thing's bowing out this way. Oh boy. It's almost like that would be the right size if there wasn't uh, one of these little pads there. I'm guessing these pads don't come off, or they will, but what do we do with them after? I guess I might as well figure out what that's gonna be like. And of course, I've stretched them out in the process, so now they're all awkward. Let's take our little buddy there. I guess there's a bit of gap there. They, they size this based on the thermal pad. Yeah, so can we put this back into place now? Um, kind of. Okay, I guess this is how it is. I'll put this in the center. Maybe based on what I'm feeling here, a little bit more up here. Smack it down in there. So we have the option, we could put it in this slot or this slot. Those are both wired into the, the CPU. And then we look at our heatsink options here. They're both about the same thermal capacity wise, just one screws on and one snaps on and off. So it's kind of like, okay, why would I want a quick release? I guess that's convenient in the future. Mocking it up, slot it into there and kind of awkward, kind of awkward. I guess it's good. Fast upgrades later on. Otherwise this one would hard mount and it would just stay put. Uh, I guess we'll use this one. That's probably the one they intend us to use. So we'll give it a peel, leverage it in, snap it down. Hope that it stays there. This one, not getting used. Or is it? I have two SSDs for this. Right here is a 512 gigger that I basically, like, it's, it's the backup. So what happens is I have my editing drive and then I run a backup at the end of an editing session. It backs up to this one. And traditionally I keep it in the chipset port. So I'd put it into one of these ports, right? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna continue doing that because I don't really have a reason to put it in the fast port. I'll keep this free for a future upgrade. Like if I replace my editing drive with a gum stick or something to that effect. Oh, that top slot's got a freaking chonker of a... So this is PCI Gen 5, is it? So like a Gen 3, like that guy, should have a frick ton of bandwidth. Shouldn't matter. 
What we want to do is make sure we're looking at the manual to find out if there's some sort of dependencies. Like sometimes it tells you like, oh, don't use this slot if you want to use these. So like I need to be able to use uh, four SATA ports. And it does not tell me anything here has any SATA conflicts. Two go to the CPU, two go to the chipset. I guess there's no freaking difference here. I think you're gonna put it in the lower one here. Less of a thermal pad that gets used up. Oh, this thing, this thing has a little quick dealer that wasn't supposed to come loose, I think. Okay, that's, that's fun, the way that worked. She's stuck in there though. This is some sort of glitch. It's not supposed to be like this. Well, can't be helped now, it's stuck in there. Okay, guess that SSD's down and in there good too now. Da da da. This board I figure is pretty much ready for installation now. Problem is, we gotta preserve these guys. We gotta put these guys somewhere safe if we ever have to reconfigure this. Put them in a baggie and stoosh them in the motherboard box. Same with this crap. But we're still not ready to put that into place because we gotta figure out how we're gonna make this work because this rad now has to return right to the res because basically I'm only gonna have the one rad. I'm only running a CPU now. I don't need all that rad. I can free up those rads for other projects. One CPU, 360 degree rad. If I can't keep that CPU cool with that rad, I don't know what to tell you, son. I got 99 problems, but enough rad ain't one. But the problem that I'm having now is this has to connect to virtually this, which makes no sense to have it come all loop de doop like that. That's just gonna frickin' kink and stuff. How do I get the rad connection directly to the reservoir? Okay, so I believe I have a solution, and it's actually quite a simple solution. Uh, Mr. Two Cents, he's always going on about how the order of your loop doesn't really matter, so uh, if I'm willing to give up on my OCD tendencies, I can leverage this fact to actually make this real freaking simple. Now, traditionally, I like reservoir, pump, block, rad, repeat. That's how I like to do it. But the only thing you really have to have in order is reservoir to pump. You'll have a hard time getting your, your system properly primed and whatnot if your res isn't flowing into your pump. That's ideal, that's just hydrodynamics. It has nothing to do with thermals. But if you see, if you look at here, I got these two guys right here. No, which, which guys? These two guys, these two guys right here. We could go reservoir to pump, pump to rad, rad to block, block return, and then that's easy. We can keep these existing tubes. I'm worried that this one might not might not reach the block that well. We're gonna have to try it and see. But it, it, it'll 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 literally be an easy situation. Like we just have these two sets of tubes go right onto the block, and that's advantageous because if we have to do any servicing, that'll swing right out easy. So that said, I think I think we're in a good position right here where I can actually put the board in now. Except to get RGB to that block, I have a weird idea. This board has some weight to it. I almost feel like I can hold it by this heatsink chunk here. Now let's see if we can't lower it down into place and see how it's gonna sit. Okay, all, all the holes line up and there's just enough of a gap here for part of what I have planned. Yeah, it lands up rather nicely. Okay, a long RGB extension needs to connect to this thing, just like that. Oh, oh, she's not tuckering down here. It looks like it might if I can get it Ugh, so I need to lift this thing that's already stuck on, is it? Oh, that thermal pad came right off. Okay, can we can or can we can't not can? Yeah, this is not ideal, eh? No, she's not a friendly setup. Man, this just don't feel right like that. Well, let's go back at the place though. No, it doesn't seem so. Ugh, I picked the wrong way to orient this RGB, bud. I'm telling you what, I was gonna fish this underneath the board and then it could go up and over. I suppose it could tuck here and not be like completely intrusive. Then where are we gonna make this cable go? Double back around and then go out and under the board? Or just have her head up? This is gonna be the biggest challenge right here. This friggin' RGB. It looks like about the only choice that we have. Have it double up, come up here. It's like if I just don't have that RGB, there's like this dark spot around this water block and it looks like ass. You know, I'm not fancy on RGB and lighting. It just, you know, you have it, you have it anyway. You might as well like make sure you do it something like decent. Okay, I guess that's the way that's gonna be. So I guess now let us invest in getting this thing screwed down. Right, that board's not going anywhere now. Let us not forget to uh, get these crystals put back in. Okay, so now what? Gotta generally pack this all in here. Front panel. Oh, wait, are these even what they say they are? Power reset HDD. That's the HDD lead there. Yeah, cause that goes up to my little, uh, this thing. That's a tight fit too, eh? That's just kind of like kicking. 
Oh, I think I found a slightly better route for it. I'm a bother with the front panel connectors first. I didn't know. Now you're gonna see here, I made a little adapter, right? So it goes from the mini GST. I found this little piece of wire with mini GST on it. And then I soldered on a, you know, a jumper pin there. So now I can actually get proper the T sensor, the thermal sensor on there with no tomfoolery, which reminds me, where the heck am I gonna put the thermal sensor? Used to be I had an inline thermal sensor. I suppose I could intercept it here or I can use the new thermal sensor I bought. Thermal sensory is not quite as fussy a situation as it once was because before I wanted to maintain fan RPMs based on overall water temperature because it was cooling more than just the CPU. But now these guys here are just going to be on the CPU. So this guy, if I replace that with the plug in the back of the res here, assuming that has enough length, then we'll have a more hidden thermal temperature sensor. It's just crappy because it's all the way up here and this has to go down here. It's like right off the bat, you know, it's not going to be feng shui. It's going to have to be all like spanning across all weird. I have a plug on the pump I could try replacing. All right, there is a healthy outlet. Will it cram in between this thing? Yeah, there we go. I guess that would work. It'd be more transparent. One less wire we have to span across. Also, we gain another plug if we need it for something. Okay, so this has to go there. That would be our return, because that's out. We've arranged this so that water goes in center and then it returns out the top. That way bubbles, bubbles don't get stuck up in there. Just going to be using the same kind of fittings I was using before. Snug that up, not too tight. Look at that. It's like it's meant to be, bud. Fate knew I was gonna be doing this upgrade. Then rad out would be this one. And this one's a bit long though, so it's kind of like, okay. I almost wish we had an arrangement like this. I guess we could do a tube from there to there. We might already be set up for that actually, aren't we? Yeah, we are, just like that. So this could still be from the pump feed and it should reach the pump. Okay, this wants to drip EA a bit though. Uh, bleh. This looks like it's gonna be one of those dribblers. Well, you know what it is? It's because it's attached to this line, which is sealed. If we uh, go and open this valve here, Oh, there we go. Let it equalize. Ain't this just nerve wracking buds? Oh, <laughs> water in the computer, uh, 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 water in the computer. So I guess we'll put this back on here. This will probably snug back up exactly as we left it. Yep, same thread and everything, right? Except we don't have to resort to that. So let's just get a little bit of torque on there. Finger tight. Yeah, exactly as we left it. Out of the rad, into the block, back into the res. And then these two guys go to the pump and they're pretty much the same length. Now, mind you, this is, um, well, I guess that's okay. It's not as flexible as I, I intended it to be, right? Because this tube's a bit hard. Hence why they call it a hard tube. I guess we start building this from the ground up here. What's it, HD audio? That goes all the way over here. Still have audio in here, eh? Bunch of USBs, they still have a fair amount of those. It's great that this stuff's all pretty much in the same spot, right? It's like they've established standards by now. Boom. Oh, what's this, SATA connectors? Boom, they go into those S ones. I don't know why they call them S. One controversy I've encountered is this board gives us all but one RGB connector for the analog RGB. I don't have any digital RGB in here. The only digital RGB I had was the fans that were on the front, but they're gone now. Fortunately, it says here it should be able to handle up to three amps, and I don't think I'm gonna have more than three amps. Think, key term. That comes in from down here. Where is it? Right there. So I guess I'm gonna have this one little double header here being our main distribution. Here's our SATAs, P, 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 S, S. So what's the difference between the P and the S? I guess I'll use all the P connectors just to be sure. Just kind of doing this all in the order in which it comes naturally. We want number one here to be our main drive. Oh, it's nice and close. Look at that, no problems. And then this guy, I think, this guy went like this. Hey, what the frick? Oh, these two guys conflict with each other. Okay, well, this thick boy, it's chonky, has to go on top. So my main drive is gonna be P2, I gotta remember that. So fans, this silver cable here is gonna be my main CPU fan now, controlling my two. Antec, <laughs> Antec, Tricools. I'm still using Antec Tricools. I replaced the blade assembly on one recently. <laughs> and then we have SysFan, 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 and SysFan. So many SysFans. The third fan here on the rod, that's gonna be SysFan 1. I'm gonna control it semi-independently, so it'll kick on with water temperature. 
not CPU controlled. I need to figure out a fan for the rear. Oh, you know, I didn't know I had two of these. I thought I only had one of these. They're DRGB, so they'll each get their own freaking header, I guess. I wanna test on these, see what they're like. Got my little uh, fan testament thinger here. As you can see, it's not particularly impressive. I guess it's just good enough to exhaust hot air. This case initially takes a 140 mil at the rear, but I sold that to someone years ago because I hadn't used it forever. For the first time in years since I put that rat out front, looks like I get to put the original fan back into place. Still works fine. And they move a lot of air for the amount of speed and noise. Big fans are great. Like it's moving a frick ton of air right now, just by default, even though she ain't ripping very hard. And uh, you can see I've RGB modified it. It originally just had blue LEDs, you know? Let's see how it sounds now. I can always change it out. It's an easy fan to get at, but it needs a header. So we have all these sys fan ports left and we don't even need all these headers. I guess we'll hide it back here at sys fan four. And then I have this extension so that I can make it like right super easy to get the freaking side panel on and off without having to dig out a wire from the board. You know, the side panel has fans. So I just unplug it there. I guess that would go on three, just kind of hide in and around there like that. All right, I guess we get this pupper in there now. Just, uh, oh, it's upside down, but there's a support bracket that goes here, but I omitted it because I felt like it blocked the fan a bit. Then I've had this in there without that bracket before. It was fine. Now for what it's worth, I kind of had this jammed under there. I don't know what that's really gonna do. We need something more, more prolific, like whatever the hell this is from. Yeah, there we go. That actually makes a difference. It's actually kind of perfect. It just jams right there. It's white, so it's not like gonna be blending in very well, but oh, I could look into getting these SATAs into place now. These rattle. That's interesting. That's an interesting decision they made. Hmm, power cables. They're just all on the floor down here. Let's see if you power cables feel like they're easier to get at, but then I don't have a bunch of rad in the way, right? Guess I might as well pull that off. Fancy, fancy silver dragon, yeah. All right, so while you weren't paying attention, I went ahead and I expedited some of the general cable management. Yes, she ain't pretty, she ain't pretty. But I believe I have all the power lines run and I have the RGB connected. And yeah, this is about, this is as good as it's getting. Function over form. This all just a panel's gonna slap back in here anyway. You're not gonna be able to see it. Some of it anyway, some of it peeps through. Can't be helped. Uh, maybe, maybe I wouldn't mind if these wires were bundled a little, like these don't exactly line up up correctly. I still have to get the pump in here. Oh, it's the flip side. Put the card into place so I could fit these wires. Oh, they're crisscrossing. Darn it. Come on now. Come on. Doesn't look pretty. You know, this is an old case. It's not designed for pretty like the new cases. That and I just don't care as much. I change stuff too much. So pump sits on a block of foam. Look at this freaking Cthulhu going on here. We got to get these lines on. So this is from the res. That's going to snap onto the in. Now, how do I want to orient this? It was sitting just like that before. Just like that. These wires got to pull out the back. This wire, well, gee, it's got to go onto the thermal sensor here. Don't want to hide it too much there. Maybe come this way. Ah, screw it. I'll tuck it down here a bit. Just uh, snap that onto there. If it's snug enough, I don't feel like I need to worry about it. I should just be able to tuck it back here. There you go. We'll have thermal sensing. Get this thing off. Get it onto the pump. So, just slapped on there. If I twist the pump this way, which I can get these to twist, it'll sit a bit nicer. Just kind of like that. Twists out easy for emptying. Jeez, this is the most empty I've seen this. We're gonna have no problem fitting the big card back into here with how like, you know, simple this is compared to before. All the way down to pump, all the way back up, in, out, through. Oh, I forgot my auxiliary line. This VGA line here, third for when I need to hook up more card. Just tuck it back here, won't get in anyone's way. Now we have a circumstance where we must install, we must install some water. And to do that, I have to loosen this thing off. And I should be able to just snoot this out forward enough, get the cap off. Okay, well, special blend of herbs and spices. Well, I'm pretty sure eyes are up here, bud. Eyes are up here. Yeah, I didn't change anything here. These are sealed, these are sealed. All the plugs are in place. There's no reason why this isn't ready for water. This is gonna be such an easy rig to prime. So simple. Gotta get my PWM control box here, ready to go. Plugs into pump power plus pump PWM. This controls the PWM frequency. That generally turns it on and off, so. If I flick that, that pump should kick on. 
Yup. Very slowly. Very, very slowly. I actually have a foot switch controller for it. So far, the speed it's going isn't even enough to get this water moving. That or it's moving already. No, no. There it goes. Oh. I got the foot switch, so I just let it go. I'll see it bubbles, bubbling, bubbles, bubbling, yeah. Can increase the speed a little bit. Gotta keep an eye on that thing, though. We don't wanna run and dry. Gotta increase the speed a bit more. Oh, careful. That looks about good. Oh, I accidentally let up on the switch. I can just press the button now, let her give her. I don't think it's gonna go dry on me. Suppose I could put this stupid top cap back into place. So yeah, out res, pump in, in rad, out rad, block, back into the res. Well, this pupper's calmed down already. You know, if you can freaking crank her, full speed, and she don't glitch out. Oh, oh, it's kind of nice. Because the loop's less complicated and the pump's just kind of sitting there, it, um, it doesn't sound anywhere near as noisy. That's a lot of freaking power supply for what I got going on in there. Well, that reminds me, I need a fan header for that pump. Which one am I gonna use? There's a pump header up top, but it'd be weird to run that line all the way up there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the front fan and the side fan, and I'm gonna bump them over to SysFan 4 and 5, which are down over here, and make this one offside here, SysFan 3, the pump. Okay, so now I figure I'm just gonna close up this res. So now we have to do the bleedy process, or the shake it around. Oh. Yeah, there goes some bubbles. My pump falls right out, eh, bud? She's not as heavy as before. Oh, oh, get all the bubble out the rad. Oh, I pretty much got this all the way turned sideways. Hey, I don't think I've ever seen the bottom of this case before. Not in a very long time. So where's that water level leveling off? Yeah, it went down a little bit. Yeah, that was an easy bleed. Like, it's just, oh, one rad, one block. Frickin' paid enough money for that water block and I'm not even using it. Well, we can button this up now, eh? Just freaking hammer these screws back into place. Flop this pupper back on. Whew. Pump power generally goes right here. And then where are we gonna put this? No, it's not gonna go nicely up to that header. Yeah, side fans now on SIS 5. Pump PWM hammering on SIS 3 right about here. Now, the question. Nice. Can the rear panel contain all this jargon? Yeah, pretty much. As good as before. Okay, well, there it is. What do you think? Form over function. Oh boy, ugly but strong. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm good with that, as long as it performs. Which I'm gonna find out because now that I'm done building it, I get to bring it over to the other side, set it up, plug it in, and well, I gotta mess with all sorts of drivers, get the drivers reinstalled. That's gonna be fun. Not, yes, little bit. Yeah, it's gotta be done. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did stay tuned, cause next I gotta run some benchmarks on this. Yeah, see how it compares to the processor it replaced. I should see gains. Not so much gaming. Well, I see games and gaming too. I can never run gaming benchmarks, even though this is not a gaming system. My gaming system's upstairs. That's where my 6950 is. This guy's got the ARC A770. It's the editing rig now. Long day, long day.